Well, we're going to look at John 3.16 tonight. A couple weeks ago, I think it was a couple weeks ago, uh, we talked about uh, condemnation, having no condemnation, and we're going to cover some other aspects of that tonight. You can go back and listen to the other one if you didn't hear that, because we're not going to cover the same things, but we'll review a little bit. Uh, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Verse 16 says, For God so loved the world. He loves us. God so loved the world that He sent Jesus. Can't ever lose sight of that fact, you know. We trust Him, we believe His Word, but you never want to lose sight of the fact that God loves you and me. You know, you can get to the place where you're just almost, if we're not careful, that we're just working for God. We're serving Him, but you can't lose sight of the fact that we're His child, and He loves us. And if it weren't for Jesus, if it weren't for His love and Him sending Jesus, we wouldn't, we, we'd be nowhere. We'd be in a really bad place. So as much as we want to serve God and do what He wants us to do on earth, we can't lose sight of the fact that His love is what motivated Jesus to do what He did, and His love is toward us now. If we say His his love is toward the world, for God so loved the world, and we'll tell that to people that don't know Him. God loves you, God loves you. Well, don't, let's just not lose sight of that ourselves. As we're working for Him, as we're doing as well, as we're pressing into more truth, as we're trying to put the principles of uh, His Word into practice, let's just not lose sight of the fact that we are His children, His little, little children, very young, to someone that's been around forever, been, having been around for a few decades is nothing. And He loves us dearly. And, you know, you can't be like, well, I, I've, I've been trusting Him for however long, and I've walked with Him. Well, that's nothing compared to how long He's been around. And we are very little and excited. It'd be like you or me, you know, adults walking together. We have some of them here just with little toddlers. You know, you're so merciful and so gracious with them. They they don't hardly know anything, haven't been around very long at all. (laughs) And sometimes we can get the sense that, well, I've been around. I mean, I know the Lord. And in the light of infinity, forever, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, that's nothing. That's less relatively than a toddler on the earth to any one of us. No matter if you're 100, if you're looking at a three-year-old toddler, the difference between you and that toddler is nowhere near the difference between us and the Lord. Mm-hmm. And so he looks at us and says, yeah, you're, you're doing a good job, sweetie. You're doing a good job. Keep up. I love you. I'm, I'm for you. Mm-hmm. You know, we're just, oh, I, I'm, I'm mature. <laughs> <laughs> He's been around forever. And so he loves us. When you come to the Lord, always remember that's got to be the foundation, that he, he, He's for us, He loves us, He understands where we are, He understands what makes us tick, He understands the things that were implanted in us before we even knew what was going on, and He works with us, and He's so good to do it. And so we need to understand that. We need to believe that and walk with Him. And then everything else will flow better when, we, when we're on that foundation. Anything, you know, we come together, we, we press into the Word, we learn the Word of God, and uh, that's great. We want to grow in Him. But, you know, we just want to be careful we don't fall into a, a method of trying to get more, learn more, do more, do better. Because, you know, in those moments where stuff, the world kind of stops, something happens, and all of a sudden you, you reevaluate what's really important, and just it can make you reset. You know, something happens or, you know, just remind you, oh, thank God this didn't happen. Oh, that was a close call or whatever. And you just realize, and so much of the stuff that we deal with, it's not even that important. You come down to it. You know the Lord, people you love. Yeah, you got it made, especially that we know Him. We know, we know him. 
So it says, uh, verse 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through that the world through Him might be saved. So God didn't come into the world to condemn us. Jesus is not the one that's condemning. He's not trying to uh, beat us up. He loves us. God so loved the world, He sent Jesus, and so God didn't send Jesus into the world to condemn us. That's not uh, God's heart. Uh, Romans 8, verse 1, we read these verses last time we were on this. Uh, It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who Do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So these verses start out saying there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, verse 1. Who what? Do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And this is important. And I know, you know, there's uh, part of that in certain versions is not there. Uh, Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. But it's there right again in verse, you know, 4. So it's, it, this is a principle. It's not just there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, period. It's there is now no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. But then it says, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So what Jesus did has made me free from the law of sin and death, from sinning and the the accompanying death that follows. We're free from that. If you just stopped in the first verse and said, well, you know, that's great as long as you don't walk according to the flesh and the Spirit, well, that can become now a burden that you can't bear, except that Jesus made it possible for us to do. Verse 3, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh... Because everybody had flesh, and so that was the entry point. That was the weak point. God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. So like us, He came in uh, the form of a man. On account of sin, He condemned sin in the flesh. In other words, He overcame it in his, with His flesh. He In the flesh, He didn't sin. So He dominated it. That the righteous requirement of the law might be filled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So Jesus came to make it possible for us to walk on the earth, not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Um, the Verse 1, again, in the Amplified Classic says, Therefore there is now no condemnation, no judging guilty of wrong for those who are in Christ Jesus, who live and walk not after the dictates of the flesh, but after the dictates of the Spirit. So not following what the flesh wants to do, but according to the Spirit, which God has made it possible that we can do. We can walk according to our hearts. We can walk according to our spirits. Now, God, through Jesus, was sent to make us right with God so that we could be declared righteous. We were talking about that on Sunday. But then we're walking. He, he put us in re- right relationship with God, but now by believing on Jesus, that's how we, we get in right relationship with Him. But now we're walking in the earth, and to the degree that we walk according to a heart, then we're going to walk without condemnation. When we yield to the flesh, that is going to lead to condemnation, but God has, through Jesus, made it possible that we can walk according to our heart and be free from the snare of sin and death that the devil wants us to be uh, caught by. So we need to know this. We need to know that we have the ability to walk free, that through Jesus we have the ability to walk free. We don't have to be under condemnation. We don't have to yield to our flesh. We all have flesh. When we say flesh, we're talking about our body. 
And we're talking about the flesh nature and all the stuff your, your my flesh wants to do. If you just leave it to itself, it, it doesn't just go in the right direction. You know, people talk about kids having a good nature. You know, pe- humanism will tell you that uh, kids just left to themselves, it's all dependent on their environment, and we just want the good to come out in them. I, I don't know about you. Have you ever seen, you leave a bunch of kids alone, they don't, all the good just comes out, right? You ever heard, it's a little, you know, there's a bunch of kids around, and it's just a little too quiet right now. What's going on? You're not thinking, oh, they just probably hatching a plan just to be good little angels. No, that's not what you're thinking. <laughs> you're thinking it's too quiet. What's going on, right? <laughs> Nobody. I mean, I don't even think people actually believe this stuff that, that would teach it. You really believe. You get a bunch of kids together, and, and the more they go into elementary and middle school and high school, just get better and better. You can leave them alone, and they, they'll just... Oh, they're just turned more and more into little angels. You know, you give them a phone unfettered, they're just, all they're going to do is read the Bible and look at <laughs> church services and teaching. They would never go any place that they shouldn't go. I mean, you give them a social media account, they probably won't even look at it at all, ever, except maybe to follow a church or something. I mean, they're, they're never going to DM somebody you know, and say anything mean. They're just going to be super nice and just send love and roses to everybody that what we believe? No, you know, you leave kids alone. They're going to get into trouble and that doesn't change as adults. We don't have a natural good nature. That's why we needed Jesus. Amen. We have a sin nature. We were born and every person, Adam messed it up. Adam and Eve messed it up for us and God bless them. But you know, we're going to meet him in heaven. But I don't know that we would have done much better, but every one of us has had to deal with it. And there's things you know, you, you, you're inside, you want to do the right thing, but your flesh wants to do the wrong thing. But here's the thing, God has sent, set us free. He set us free. Let's go down, skip down to Romans 7. We'll just cover that now since we just mentioned. This is, this is the plight of every person. But the good news is Jesus set us free. We don't have to just walk like we don't have Jesus. Romans 7, verse 14, this is Paul. The, you can read the whole chapter. He goes on a, a lot about things, but we're going to pick up in verse 14 for the sake of time. The Apostle Paul says, for, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do... That I do not practice, but what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree that the law, it, that it is good. I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I do not find." For the good that I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. So he's saying, I want to do the right thing, but I find that my flesh wants to do the wrong thing. And so if I agree that that thing is wrong, that I agree that the commandment is right because I don't want to do it. And if I don't want to do it, I'm saying that's a bad thing to do, which means the thing's right. But what I find is that there's stuff is working against each other here. Verse 21, I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one that wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that, man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So if you go back to verse uh, 21, it says, I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. Verse 22, for I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. So your inward man, the part of you that's born again, wants to do the right thing. You're, the part when you've renewed your mind, your mind wants to do the right thing, but you got your flesh to deal with. 
that doesn't want to do the right thing. And so then at the end, it says, uh, verse 24, O wretched men that I am, he's saying, I'm in this condition. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Who's going to deliver me from this condition? Verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus delivered us from it. So then with my mind, I serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. In the Amplified Classic, those two verses, 24 and 25, says, O unhappy and pitiable and wretched man that I am, who will release and deliver me from the shackles of this body of death? Who will deliver me from this condition that my flesh wants to do the wrong thing, but my spirit wants to do the right thing? In my mind, I'm saying I want to do the right thing, but I got this desire out of my flesh to do the wrong thing. Verse 25, oh, thank God, He will, through Jesus Christ, the Anointed One, our Lord. God, through Jesus, has made a way for us to be delivered from that. We've been delivered from the law of sin and death. We don't have to go the direction of the whole world. We've been set free. It says, so then I, indeed, I, of myself with the mind and heart, serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. So there is a, a combat going on between our flesh and our, our inner man. So we're talking about condemnation. When we yield to the flesh, like we started out in Romans talking about, that's where condemnation is going to come from because we know, like what Paul's saying, I know, I agree that what I'm supposed to do is right because I'm no, I know that this thing is wrong. And if I, if I don't want to do it, I'm saying that that's wrong, which means the commandment's right. So what's the commandment for us? Let, go to Galatians 5.13. That's you know, skipping up some. Galatians 5.13. It says, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Okay, so we've been set free. We've been called to liberty. Through Jesus, we've been set free. We can do, we, can, we, can, we have liberty, we have a free will to act. It says, only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. So just because we're free, that doesn't mean we should go now yield to the flesh. The Bible does not teach that we can do whatever we want because Jesus died for us. Now, we have the ability of course, you can do whatever you want. I can do whatever I want, but there's consequences. We have liberty to do whatever we want, but there's going to be consequences and bad things happening if we yield to the flesh. You can blow up a lifetime of integrity in five minutes or less. You yield to your flesh. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Everything, your trust with people, your, your reputation could go down the drain in a matter of seconds, making the wrong decision, yielding to your flesh. We all have, we all have flesh. So we, we have to choose what we yield to. So it's not right to say, well, thank God for Jesus, and so we can just live condemnation-free no matter what we do. That's just not true. Because we know on the inside what's right and wrong. And so if we violate that, we're going, condemnation is going to be there and it's our own heart. We'll see that, I believe, we'll read a scripture, but it's going to be, uh, it, it's going to be our own heart that's condemning us. Why? Because we know we're doing it wrong. And we, the thing is, we don't have to live there. We don't have to be there. We don't have to say, well, there's just no way, so I have to be condemned. No, Jesus made a way so we could be set free. And He made a way for us to be cleansed. If we do miss it, we can be cleansed and cleanse our conscience. We talked about that last time. Your conscience can be free that even though you missed it, even though you did what you know was wrong, if you, if you get it right with God, you can come to God, get it right, and then you can be free. And you don't have to live under condemnation. We don't have to live there, but we can also avoid it to begin with. And we can just walk in the, in the truth and walk according to our heart. So let's read the verse, uh, beginning of verse 13 again. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. In other words, use our freedom to serve one another, to walk in love. Verse 14, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this. 
The law is all the, the, the Old Testament, the, the, especially the five, uh, first five books of the Old Covenant, Old Testament, uh, called the Pentateuch. That's the, the law, all that's contained in it, the Ten Commandments, all these things. The law uh, told people what to do and don't do, but they did not have, uh, they were not spiritually alive like we can be in the New Testament. So they had all these laws. But verse 14 says, for all the law is fulfilled in one word or one saying, even this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So that is the law. And the next verse, but if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. That the law of love is our law in the New Testament. That's what we're to live by. If we live by love, then we won't break any of the laws that, are, that apply to us today. You know, there's laws in the Old Covenant about ritualistic uh, behaviors and sacrificing animals. They don't apply to us today. But everything, anything that uh, the uh, blood of Jesus and the New Testament doesn't undo, you know, then there's certain things that are, it's still the right thing not to lie. It's still the right thing not to commit adultery. Those things apply. But if you walk in love, you won't do any of those things anyway. You can't love somebody and lie to them. You can't love somebody and and commit adultery with their wife. You don't love somebody and commit and kill them. No, if you love the law of love supersedes all those laws. It outdoes them. It's much higher. Jesus said, you know, you just speak roughly to somebody, you're guilty of murder. You look at a woman to lust after you've committed adultery. That's the law of love is so much higher than these laws. So it's saying that that the, the law of love is the fulfillment of these. So then verse 16 says, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So he said, just before this, the verse before it, all the law is fulfilled in one word, even you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Then he says, so walk in the spirit. Now this is, uh, you don't want to be dogmatic about this, but when you're reading these verses here, see that, that the S is capitalized. The, the, the S, uh, or the, the word for spirit is pneuma, and I'm not a Greek scholar, but I can tell you this. There, the, you have to determine by the context whether that should be capitalized or not. And if you look at the context in a number of places, it's probably capitalized. You know, people have different doctrinal slants where it probably should be lowercase. And here's one of those places where it's talking about, yes, you can walk according to the Spirit of God, but it's saying you're, it's warring between your spirit and your, you have a spirit, little s. And then you have flesh, little f. So it's warring between. So look at this with that, uh, just with that context. Verse 16, I say then, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, if you walk in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, according to Him, He's going to bear witness with your spirit. So that works either way. Verse 17, for the flesh lusts against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. We'll see there, yeah, the Holy Spirit is against the flesh, but you could see it's a war between your spirit and your flesh. Your, your spirit does not want to do the things of the flesh, and the flesh, well, you leave it to itself. It does not want to do the spiritual things. It wants to go do what it wants to do, when it wants to do it, and the degree it wants to do it, all of our flesh. You know, it doesn't want to eat just one chip. It wants to eat the whole bag. You know, it, 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 you just put that, it, 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 we, have to, we have to control it. Verse 17, for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things you want or you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. How do you not be under the law? You're led by the spirit. So what do you do? You're being led by your heart. What is, what is your, your heart is uh, according, it's been recreated according to God. And God is love. And the, the Bible, we don't, we're going to put this up, but Romans 5, 5 says that the, the love of God has been poured out in your, your heart. So you're walking according to love. So you're walking to your spirit. We, ought, we just read that love, walking in love, is the fulfillment of the law. You know, even it said, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. That's, that's the whole law is fulfilled in that one word. 
Okay, so then if we walk according to our heart, which is according to love, if you, if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. And if you're not under the law and you're not doing the things that are uh, taught against in the law, but you're walking according to love and you walk according to love, there will be no condemnation. We can walk free of it. And so the way to be able to walk according to our spirit is by the power of God. So God didn't just tell us to do that. He enabled us to do it. In other words, we as Christians, as born-again Christians, we have the ability to overcome the flesh and walk by our hearts. We all have the ability. We are not helpless. We are not in the place where we just can't, can't help it because Jesus came. And because Jesus has come and we believed on Him, now we're in a different place. We're, we, we're set free from the law of sin and death. You know, we read it. We won't, turn, we won't go back there. But it said, for the law of the Spirit of life, Romans 8, 2 said, for the law of Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So I'm not bound. I don't have to go down that path. Now, if I miss it, there's, there's cleansing but I don't have to go down that path. We need to know that. We need to know that we have the Spirit of God on the inside of us and we can walk free. Now, we've all missed it. We've all come short. We've all done, done stuff that we didn't want to do, but we didn't have to. If we think we have to, now we're contradicting the Bible and we're setting ourselves for, for failure. But if we realize, wait, I don't, I don't have to. If I'll listen to God, if I'll listen to my heart, there's always a way out. Uh, Romans 13, 8, <clears throat> and so then we're free from condemnation. We don't have to get under that. Romans 13, 8 says, Owe no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves one another, or he who loves one another has fulfilled the law. See, there it is again. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness or lie, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, all are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 10, love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. So all these other things, all these commands, if you break them, condemnation is going to be there. But if we walk according to love, then we fulfilled all the law and there won't be any condemnation. That's walking according to the Spirit, not the flesh. That's the pathway for the born-again Christian. That's the pathway for us as children of God, to just walk according to that inner prompting, according to the Word, which is always going to... the uh, Our inner prompting through the, the Lord is always going to uh, line up with His Word. Our spirit is always going to be right. And so we will fulfill the law by living walking in love. Let's look at 1 John 3, verse 18. 1 John 3, 18, it says, My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before Him. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Notice it's our heart, our heart, who condemns us. Verse 21, beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. And whatever we ask, we receive from Him because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. Verse 23, and this is His commandment that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. So several things here. Verse 20, go back to verse 20. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. So our heart, if our, He said, if our heart condemns us. Well, how would our heart condemn us? When we do something that we know is wrong. Our heart will condemn it. There's no way to escape that. You know, any teaching that would tell you it's just Jesus covered everything, it doesn't matter what we do, it's all fine, you don't ever have to repent, it's all forgiven, it's forgiven, you don't repent, you're going to have condemnation, period. 
There's no escaping it. Everybody knows that. You know, just, eat, just growing up, I remember there was one time I was in Kmart and I opened a package of a Star Wars. It was a Star Wars or G.I. Joe character. I think it was Star Wars. And I took a gun. They had these little figures. You guys know what I'm talking about, the little action figures. How many of you guys know what I'm talking about? Okay. Little action figures. I think it was Star Wars, but it could have been G.I. Joe. I don't know. I like both of them. Anyway, I opened one of them. I don't remember how old I was. I opened it, and I took a gun out of it. I don't even remember if I took it with me. But anyway, I know I was getting up to the front of the store, my mom, and a guy stopped me. And my mom was not happy. And I, but all before that, all walking up to the front, I felt so bad inside. Do you guys know that pit? You know what I'm talking about. No matter if you got caught or not, there's that pit in your stomach, you know. Well, that's your conscience that's trying to get a hold of you. Even if you're not born again, at that point, I was born again. You know, as a born again person, your conscience is is a true guide. People still have a conscience. It's a voice of their spirit. As an unborn again person, it's just that spirit, they're spiritually dead. Dead doesn't mean it's not existing. It means it's separated from God. That's what spiritually dead means. They're alive. That means they're separated from God. So their conscience will still try to talk to them. But if it's trained wrong, it'll let them do anything they want. But when you become born again, your conscience is a true guide. It's a right guide. You can trust it. But I know even as a kid, I mean, I bugged, oh, and I'm sure I got a spank. I don't remember. I can't remember exactly if I got a spanking for that exact thing. But, you know, a spanking will cleanse the conscience of a child. You have that bad feeling, and you know you did it wrong. And I'm not saying spanking is the right thing in every instance. You know, that's not the, the form of discipline, but it is absolutely biblical, And it is the right, especially for a young child, and they do something on purpose, there's a time they absolutely need to know that there are consequences to their actions. But the one part about that is that spanking will cleanse the child's conscience. They will realize, I, they paid for it, and they can go on. And it, and it sets a, it sets a pa- pattern. They understand you can't just do anything you want. So when people try to tell you, oh, you can just do anything you want because of Jesus, that, number one, dumbs down the blood of Jesus. It's disrespectful to the blood of Jesus, and it's just not true. You will feel guilty, and it will eat you up. And you can try to quote scriptures and say how much Jesus loves you. The real thing is just to get right, repent, say, God, I'm sorry. That was wrong. I separate myself from it. I say it was wrong. Say I did it. And I say, I, I just ask you, forgive me. Well, and what's that? He already has through the blood of Jesus, but you coming to him will cleanse your conscience and will get you right where you need to be. So telling people they can do whatever, that doesn't help anybody. Telling people the truth, what the Bible said, will help understand that we don't have to go down that path. We can sidestep the whole thing. If we'll listen to the inside, God's always leading us in the right way. Don't say it. Keep your mouth shut. Don't do that. If we look on the inside, He's not beating us up. He's trying to help us. And then, but if we do miss it, then there is, there's, our heart's going to condemn us. We know, we know, we missed it. We did it wrong. And if we just try to sidestep it and not just, well, I'm not going to say I did it wrong. Doesn't change the fact your heart knows you did it wrong. Well, I'm just not going to say sorry because that's our pride. We're just not going to tell that a person, it, uh, I'm sorry. It doesn't matter. We're still going to feel guilty. because We're going to feel condemned. But verse, so verse 20 John, uh, 1 John 3, 20 says, For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart who knows all thing. things. Verse 21, Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, why? Because we're living according to our heart. We have confidence toward God. And here is why condemnation is such a tool of the devil. It's not that he wants us to sin. He, yes, he wants, us to de- he wants to destroy us. He also wants to steal our confidence. So if he can get you to yield to your flesh, to, for me to yield to my flesh and start going down that path, 
there will be condemnation, and with that condemnation comes a lack of confidence, a lack of trust, a lack of boldness. Why? Because we know we did something wrong. And we can try to push past and say, well, it's just the blood of Jesus anyway. I'm going to just command whatever in the name of Jesus. The fact is, a moment before, we yielded to our flesh and didn't yield to the Spirit of God. But then when we try to go walk in the things of God, when we are feeling condemned, it won't work because we don't have faith. Why? Because we just believed the wrong thing a minute before. We didn't believe what God said enough to avoid doing it, but now we're trying to override it and use the principles of God when before, and the devil will just laugh at us. If we, if we try to stay in that place, what's the solution? Number one, we don't want to get in that place in the first, we don't want to get in that condition in the first place. Sidestep it, don't yield to our, our uh, flesh, yield to the Spirit, because then Satan has no, he has nothing in us. And we know we're yielding to the right thing, and our heart won't condemn us, and then the Bible says we have confidence. It's not in your own strength, it's in what Jesus did, but it's in you believing what Jesus did. So then what if you miss it? Well, you come to God and you say, Lord, I missed it. Sorry. As fast as you can. Don't wait. Just say, I missed it. Acknowledge you missed it. Put it under the blood of Jesus. Separate yourself from that and get right back up now in boldness. The devil will try to say, but you just did that, you know, three minutes ago. Doesn't matter. I'm right with God. Now you go. Now that's the right way to deal with it. You can right there get right back into where you have boldness and confidence because you're standing on what God has done through Jesus. But if we try to go in that middle ground where we're saying, I know I did it wrong, but I'm, I'm, I'm calling on the blood of Jesus, but we won't get it right and repent, we're not going to cleanse our conscience and we're not going to be able to walk in what God has for us to walk in. So verse 21, beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God and whatever we ask, we receive from Him because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. Verse 23, and this is His commandment that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. He said, and this is the commandment. So he said, if we keep his commandments, we, we, well, it says we, whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments. What's his commandment? Walking in love, which is what? Yielding to our heart. If we'll yield to our heart, then we're keeping the law of love, which is the fulfillment of all the law, which is, uh, supersedes all commandments, which then there's no condemnation, which we walk in the right thing. We walk according to what God has said, and we receive everything we believe Him for because we have confidence. Now, it's all based on what Jesus did, and it's, it's only by the blood of Jesus that we could even come boldly before God, only by the blood of Jesus that right relationship and right living has been bought, but He gave us the power and the strength to do this, and so it's possible. It's possible for us to walk in it. And if we miss it, if we get uh, tripped up, then we can go to God and we can say, hey, God, I missed it. I repent. And we just, so then we can just walk in this. We do our best to walk according to our heart. If we miss it, we get right back there and continue on. And so then we walk free from condemnation. And we can only do it by His power, by His strength, by His help. Let's just close with this, Galatians 2.20. <clears throat> Galatians 2.20 said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. I have been crucified with Christ. So what Jesus did, I'm a part of it. I, I took part with Him because He rose. I, I was raised as He was raised. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live with, in the flesh... I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. So Christ, 
He lives in me, and He's going to help me to do this. And, I, and I'm in the flesh, but I'm living according to what He did. In other words, He gives me the power to do it. He gives me the power to overcome. One more scripture, uh, 2 Corinthians 13, 4. One right before. It says, For though He was crucified in weakness, yet He lives by the power of God. This is Jesus. For we also are weak in Him, and we shall live with Him by the power of God toward you. So we shall w- live with Him, what? By the power of God. So the power of God is toward us, Christ lives in us, and He will enable us to The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. The love of God has been poured out in my heart. The law of God is love. And so God has made it possible for me to walk according to my spirit, which is love. And as I do that, there's no condemnation for me. I walk in everything God has for me. There's confidence for me uh, toward him. I receive everything I believe him for because I am bold because I'm walking according to my heart and in all that Jesus has provided for me. And then there's no condemnation for me. I walk clear of it. The devil tries stuff. Yield to your flesh. You say, oh no, I'm not going to do that. I walk right by it. And I just keep walking in the power of God. Amen. God, this is our life. This is what he's made for us to do. This is what he set, uh, made it possible. And it's possible for us if we'll, if we'll just walk in him. Praise the Lord. He's good.